Oh, it looks like we just let went live. All right. I'm pretty sure. Hey, there we go. We're live. We all are. Right. We are all the way live. <laughs> so, uh, hey, hey, folks. Um, it looks like we only got two folks in the chat room right now. We might want to give a uh, couple people a chance to to come. Yeah, up some people will roll in here. Yeah. Oh, oh, there, oh there's yeah. me. That's me. Delay. Delay. That's, okay. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. Uh, yeah. Sorry. We're not the most professional. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're just, drink we're just drinking and talking. That's all we're doing. Yeah. That's basically it. If anybody, wants to, if anybody wants to watch a bunch of drunks drink a bunch of stuff, they're more powered to them, right? <laughs> That's what they signed up for. Right. Yeah, exactly. I feel like that's mostly what Whiskey Tube is at this point. It's a lot of live streams. Yeah. 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 All right. So we got a couple people. Jeffrey in the bottom shelf are in. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Jeffrey. Jeffrey Patron was actually our first guest on the on the Rocket Re Review stream yeah. way back in December when we did this. That Christmas special. At Christmas. Uh, who else? Oh, hey. Whiskey Mariachi's in the house. Uh, my Whiskey and Patty. Patty Baloney. What's up? What's happening, man? How you doing? Um, good to see you. Um, so, well, I guess we can get started proper. Yeah. 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 So I'm <laughs> at, That's. I'm Erica. You may have noticed I'm not the old man, and I'm sorry for that. <laughs> you are way better than him. That's. We did. Uh, we did notice. You, we did notice you were were not the old man. That's for yeah. sure. So, <laughs> Couple so. differences there. Yeah. Ed stepping up his Ed stepping up his uh, his guest game, that's for sure. So yeah, right. Oh, we just yeah. swapsies sometimes. That's okay. That's well, okay. Yeah, Mike couldn't make it tonight. He's uh, he's got something big going on in the morning he needs to prepare for. It's so. weird you just called your dad by his first name. I know. Well, I feel like on this show I need to be specific. Okay. You know. <laughs> that's okay. And then yeah. of course our wonderful, wonderful guest, my bourbon journey, Mr. Scott. How you doing, Mr. How's everybody doing? I'm very, very well. Thanks for having me on. I, I appreciate it. So I was, yeah. I was looking forward to this. It's always uh, fun to kind of uh, sit down and uh, shoot the you-know-what for a little bit, have a couple of good pours, and go from there. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much for coming on and slumming, slumming it with us over here at the Rock. No, no, no. That's 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 <laughs> perfectly all right. Well, it's, it's good to, uh, to be able to talk with some, uh, some local Wisconsin people. That's always kind of nice. So I get... No, you guys aren't going to give me a hard time for saying Wisconsin. Everyone always gets <laughs> that a little bit. So any anybody not from Wisconsin tonight in the chat may identify the same kind of accents that we have. So oh, I know, right? It is what it is. I got to ask because I know for me, if someone points out my Wisconsin accent, I I instinctively feel embarrassed, and I I don't I feel like I shouldn't like I shouldn't be ashamed of that, but I do yeah. I do. It does get you, you. You very. You feel very um, like uh, like youperish. Like you feel like I somehow I should be talking like uh, you know like Fargo all of a sudden. Like yes, we're all from Wisconsin. You know, like you get all crazy. So I I I, I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I know. You, even you make fun of me. That's because it just comes out like surprisingly thick sometimes. Like I can't remember what we were talking about. I'm just like hey. Long A's, just a series. Yeah, of long it's the A's. long A's. Yeah, yeah. It does. It does. It does come out once in a while, you know, but it is what it is, right? Right. Yeah. 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 Um, but anyway, enough. Enough about our ridiculous way of talking. <laughs> we we've got to talk about some bourbon. After all, we're talking to the man himself. My bourbon journey. Yeah. Um. So we wanted. I wanted to talk about um, best bourbons uh by value and then by that i don't mean value bourbons like i don't mean the cheapest bourbons i mean the ones that give you the most bang for your buck you know what i mean yeah so we prepared we prepared a, a few different uh ones actually kind of a different range of prices um but all i think all these came in under 50 dollars on our side i don't know about your side scott yeah no all, all of mine uh basically and, and i guess i'll kind of just let you know what what i've got here so i've got well, it's just a couple of different of the the Eagle Rare, and these actually all look to be store picks, except the um, the old Granddad One One Four. But um, as far as like value bourbons to me, I mean, 
you know, without sacrificing like quality of something, um, you know, I'd try to stick around that maybe, you know, $25, $30 range, which, you know, um, if you're kind of going nowadays with the value that we've seen with bourbon, um, you know, 25 bucks is getting very, very close to it now being a, a bottom shelf price bourbon, you it's know, true. Yeah. without, without sacrificing. I mean, again, there's always going to be like the cocktail stuff, like, you know, the Evan Williams and things like that, that are going to be super cheap. But if, if you don't want a cocktail or you're not, you know, looking to make a bunch of drinks and you want something that's halfway decent to sip on, you know, I've got, um, you know, a little bit of the Elijah Craig small batch, some, uh, Buffalo trace, which I wish we could find a little more in, in our area. Oh, I know. Um, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it, you know, people talk about the, the Buffalo trace, like it's super easy to get, but not very often do we see it in our area. And if it does, it's gone fairly quickly. It's so, true. It's true. You know, but again, it's a, it's a nice kind of just easy sipping 90 proof, you know, bourbon. It's not going to blow you away. It's just a nice, you know, drinking, you know, bourbon. So, yeah, no, yeah. I agree. I think that's the funny thing. Like as bourbon has gotten bigger and bigger, you know, we've seen a, well, we've seen a boom across whiskey categories in general, but bourbon in particular. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a certain weird thing where rarity tends to also drive up people's expectations of, you know, what they're going to get. Um, Absolutely. Like, like, I think Buffalo Trace makes great, great products. Um, but at some point, like it gets to the, you know, it gets to the point where you're just, you're paying for the fact that it's rare and you can't, you can't get it at all. Like yeah. it's hard to find yeah. rather than, yeah. you know. Like, I don't think it's like the best bourbon. You've right. Ever had. Yeah. Oh, it's good bourbon. Yeah. It's good bourbon. But. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. I mean, look at, um, like we were talking before we went live, we were talking about the Henry McKenna, which is a $30, $35 bottle that wins a, a blind, you know, um, you know uh, like taste test, basically, in San Francisco. And it's now crowned the best bourbon in, or even whiskey. It beat out all the scotches as well. It beat out every whiskey as the number one whiskey in the world and it's 35 bucks yeah yeah and you can and, you, and we can generally find it, and i think most people can find it they oh, make so much of it absolutely. you know so i think yeah and then that's that's the problem talking heads like us on youtube start saying how great it is and, yeah. and there's a run on all the stores well you know and that was the thing i saw some stuff you know speaking of that i saw stuff today there was a guy who posted something he's like well i better I better run out to the store and get a hold of a couple of the Henry McKenna's before the flippers get to them. Right. You know, and, right. and sadly that's the way it's become. I mean, anything that will, you know, uh, that has a, a sale price that you can now turn around and sell it for double the money or triple people are just going to take advantage of it. They may not even know anything about whiskey. They just hear what it is. And now all of a sudden it's $75 or whatever it may be. Yeah, you know, for sure. You know. I know uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey down in the chat, he's saying finding Buffalo Trace for him is very easy. Um, but Henry McKenna 10 and the and Weller, the Weller line are really hard to find. Yeah, Weller has got a um, a very, yeah. a very crazy like allocation. Um, it's true. Wh where, where is Jeffrey from? Do you know? He's out of New Jersey. So. Oh, OK. Yeah. 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 We don't get any. Uh, we don't really get any Weller here at all um the henry mckenna we see that we could probably go just about anywhere right now and get that oh yeah yeah i know um, yeah my local liquor store just down the way uh rays has has some yeah yeah, yeah. well now everybody in your area is, uh, know, right? <laughs> they signed out of the live chat they're like well there you go they're out look at there's nobody in here anymore they're right, all right. got what they needed and yeah. left it, it wasn't, it probably wasn't, but a few hours after everything was posted, you know, by Fred Minnick and, and all of that, that people were off to the races. They wait, you know, with such anticipation of, of what that top whiskey is going to be. And God forbid, like this was, if it's something that most people can get, it's, it's gone. Right. Yeah. So, um, the last, the last time when, when the 2018 one, um, I had gone over to our, our local total wine here 
And they said they had 40 cases. And in two days, it was all gone. Jeez. So, I mean, you can yeah. see how people are influenced by awards and people saying good things about stuff. And, yeah. you know, you know, whatever, I guess to each their own, yeah. you know. I mean, and I don't blame people for wanting to drink, wanting to drink stuff. No. Like, people, people don't want to miss out, right? People don't want to miss yeah. out on something that sounds really good. I, I, I get that. I get that. Yeah. Although I'm so contrary and I'm like, well, I want to try the stuff nobody else <laughs> knows. Yeah. Yet. I'm not even a bother. Well, you know, and, and oh, speaking of that, I, I think I think a little bit of what you guys do, I think a little bit of what you guys do and, and I do, I mean, as you've probably seen, I do a lot of reviews of different craft like whiskeys. Now, things that people in our area or very few areas may not get, but I guess my hope for when I do things is that people are not only interested in like what they can drink, but just whiskey or bourbon in general, you know? Oh. So like a lot of like what, you know, you and your dad review, um, you know, or talk about, I I'm, I'm just interested enough in whiskey, whether we get it or I'm going to buy it or not. I like to hear about all those things. So, um, you know, that's why, and, and I've, I've fortunately been, you know, pretty good about getting a lot of distilleries to to send stuff and, and all of that which makes it even nicer but it's it's fun i like tasting a lot of different things like like you guys do as well yeah for sure so actually well you know and i'm not that big i i'm like the least bourbon oriented person on our channel which is why i'm glad eric is here <laughs> <laughs> um because i was nervous about doing this alone because i'm I've got a reputation for liking Irish and Scotch more. Oh, that, which is good. I like that yeah. stuff. Too. I'm not a huge Scotch guy, but I do. I do. I've kind of dabbled a little bit with some of the um, the Irish stuff. I I just recently had um, the Teeling Small Batch, which is that rum cask finished, yeah. really good. Oh, Teeling Teeling's making some great stuff. Yeah, I, it's one I, of your favorites, right? It is one of my favorites. Yeah. Oh, by far, by far. Um, I actually, they just have, they just came out with their first in-house distilled thing. Um, and it's not available in the U.S. yet. And I'm debating with myself whether I want to pay shipping to get it, to get it from Ireland. <laughs> so, so what is, so they're, they're new like distillate. What, what is it? Like, what is it going to be? So it's, it's single pot still. Um, okay. And as far as, if I remember correctly, um, it's all, it's half barley, half malted barley, half unmalted. Um, and it's only three years old, so it's you know it's very young. Um, but you know, I think their first their first bottle was like uh, what was it? Um, you know, they had a special label and a special box, and they made only twenty of them, and they sold for twelve thousand euros a piece. Um, really? Which yeah, set a record, set a record for the the most uh, uh, money spent on a bottle from a new distillery or something. Wow. Ridiculous. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty crazy. Um, well, I mean, I mean that's very, very uh, similar to what we all deal with here with like bourbon and rye. It's, I mean, you put a little fancy package on it, and you make it a small run of something, and you tell people no one's gonna be able to get it, and everyone wants it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Oh, so, um, but why don't we? So, I, I guess I would ask you guys, really, because you guys are more into bourbon than I am. What is it? What do you guys look for in a bourbon, and particularly in a in a bourbon, kind of like we're talking about today, and like a, a bourbon? What do you look for? What is your the value in a bourbon? So, okay, do you want to start? No, oh, ladies first. You go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I'm bad with words, so they, um, so for me, it's gonna sound weird, but like it's like that corn and heavily sugar taste, and like to me, it always tastes a little bit like candy corn. Which I know was controversial because a lot of people apparently hate candy corn, but they're wrong. And as long as you eat like five of them, it's a perfectly good candy. And that's kind of what I look for in a bourbon, like that overly sugary taste. That's just, but like it's it's kind of vegetably sweet. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, which is probably maybe why you gravitate a little bit towards Maker's Mark with it being a weeded, softer yeah. bourbon. It's sweet. You oh, know, it's she hates rye. She did. She'll deal with oh. a Ryan bourbon. Okay. Now, <laughs> now it's, very, it's, it's very, it's very interesting that you've got a maker's mark and an old elk next to each other. Cause you've got something that are like completely different profiles because I think the old elk, 
is really high barley, I believe. It, it yeah. is. It's yeah. 33, 35%. Multiple. Yeah. Yeah. Which is which is which is strange because I mean you, not very often do you see a a bourbon with much malted or with much malted barley, you know, at all. You know. So but yeah, I guess for me, um I try to find something that's I, I also like something that's a little bit on the sweeter side, but still with some good spice. But for me, the main thing I probably look for is is something that if I can get it like non-chill filtered, um, which leaves a lot of the, the kind of oils or fatty acids in, in the bourbon, it allows for it to kind of coat your mouth much more and, and allows the flavor of whatever it is you're drinking to stay there a little bit longer. And if it's higher proof, generally speaking, you get a nice long finish, which, which I really, really enjoy as well. So, yeah. But, yeah. What I do think that's something I do really love, well, so the, our two here, two of our first picks for value bourbon, Maker's Mark, I think it is very soft, it's very pleasant. Yeah. It's, it's a good starter. Right. Yeah. It's very cherry and everyone can get it. Right. They're never gonna run out of this. You jinxed it, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. It's, it's, a really good, it's a really good bourbon. It's yeah, a really there's good gonna bourbon. be a warehouse collapse tomorrow and all this is gonna be gone. Exactly. <laughs> you, know, you know, one other thing that would be kind of interesting with the Maker's um, you know, maybe you would enjoy the Maker's 46, which ha can really impart some really extra sweetness on some of them when they're adding those, the barrel staves into the, into the barrels, they're adding different flavors and stuff. So the 46, uh, the Maker's 46 has some really kind of interesting, you know, flavors. And generally speaking, it's a little bit um, kind of softer, sweeter. And, and if you can find a, like a store pick or even the, the cast strength, they really do some crazy things, but it they it, they're sweet. It's it's a sweet bourbon for sure. For sure. Oh yeah, no, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we should definitely get a hold of some of that. Um, yeah. I know and it is, can... that is something I really do appreciate about corn. Like, I, I I always prefer rye just for yeah yeah. There's the face. There's the face. I do. Um, I do prefer rye because I I dig the spicy dill stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but corn. You can get some really nice, oily, creamy, long finished whiskeys with corn. Yeah. Yeah. You get a different flavor profile of corn. You know, and I think that's something people criticize bourbon for is not having enough diversity. Yeah. But I don't know if I necessarily agree. Right. Because, yeah, even like you were saying a couple minutes ago, like these are two very different bourbons. Like, mm -hmm. like we were saying, the makers kind of gives you that cherry sweetness versus this, you get a little bit more corn and sugary sweetness. Yeah. 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 yeah, it is. I mean, and, and that's where, you know, when you when you use the term, you know, bourbon, I mean, it's so generic because it means so many things. There's so many different, you know, profiles. I mean, really, honestly, they change from, you know, kind of bottle to bottle, things will change a little bit, you know. So to compare like, you know, what you've got there, Old Elk and Makers, you can't, but they're both going to be, you know, term bourbon. Right. But what is it? You know, so that's that's the one thing. It's kind of I always, you know, kind of coined it like it's the same but different. Yeah. yeah. You know, oh, for sure. It's, it's all bourbon, but it's all way different, you know. So yeah. that's that's the one thing I like. And I think that's why I kind of gravitated, you know, early on to trying so many different things was was because of that. Was like you try something, you're like, well, boy, that tastes good. Now I try something else and that tastes way different. And I kind of really enjoyed tasting those different profiles of things. So definitely. Yeah. Cause I just, I just switched the old elk, which I know you did a review on which, um, and, but we also did one and this is one of our new favorites. Um, and I gotta say, this is a far cry from the makers because the high malt does make it taste or smell at least a lot more, Similar, I like I compare it to an Irish whiskey in a, uh, in some ways. Yeah, I mean, for me, when I tasted it, I mean, for for me, I'm not a huge Scotch guy because I'm not super crazy about malted barley as a single grain. Sure. And and again, that's just me. But um, you know, so once I tasted that, the one thing that popped out for me like right away with high barley and a bourbon 
was this Band-Aid flavor that I get. <laughs> I get this, I get this nose and taste of like this, like, I guess I'll say a fresh Band-Aid, whatever, you know, yeah, right. and, it, and it, it's a little bit off-putting, you know, for me. So, you know, but that's the one good thing about whiskey is that, you know what, to each their own, drink it how you like, you know, drink what you like, you know, it, it the, the one thing I like about whiskey or bourbon in general is it allows for this. Right. Oh, yeah. Do this, yeah. You know, and that's the, that's the best part of it for, for me is being able to listen to other people, talk to other people and, and you enjoy what you enjoy and why and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. So, Oh yeah. There's nothing, nothing starts a conversation quite like just talking about, like just talking about whiskey as there's yeah. some, as everyone smells something a little bit different. Everyone interprets it a little bit different. Yeah. 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 Yep. I know, yeah, that's especially, the, especially for you, Erica, I feel like the things you're sensitive, like on the nose are so different from the things I take up. You know what I mean? Not like, so. not like so different, but like, <laughs> especially when we're talking bourbon, I feel like you get things I don't. And then uh, when we're doing rye, like she can always smell the rye and something. Yeah. She, she's hypersensitive to the yeah. rye. It, it is. I mean, it's it's very it's very distinctive. I mean, really, they've said for the most part they they feel that women, for the most part, have the best palates for I'll say whiskey, just because that's what I'm more familiar with. Right. Yeah. But it, and it is. We all say that. And you talk to other people. Well, you're sensitive to this. You're sensitive. Well. Yes, you are, because that means you've got like a great palate. You're picking up things that we may not even be picking up. Right. You know, so which is which is great, because I think it's probably closer to what it really is. So when she's when she's telling you what it tastes like, that probably is what it tastes like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say, right, garbage. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That could, that could very well be. I you know, and another thing, because I'm you know, another not thing, not as if if you're trying rye whiskey, rather than trying something that's maybe like a super high rye try something that's super like low like maybe even in the lower 50s and just see because a lot of times those drink way more like a bourbon than they do a rye oh we've tried that yeah. oh you have okay, we, we, okay. We've, tried, we've done we've done like uh you know they're basically like barely legal rye or even yeah. some, even some stuff that just uh like kilbegan kilbegan irish rye um it actually only has like 30 percent yeah. rain in it um and I said that one was fine. you said that one was fine as soon as she put water in it and couldn't taste the rye anymore yeah that's that's when i liked it <laughs> it, it, feel, it feels like it feels like part of right yeah she can she can smell she can smell the rye from a mile away it, it feels it feels like part of my mission now to like give you a rye to try to trick you to see if i can give you <laughs> something that you don't think is a rye and, i mean if you add water like you were saying like some of these lower rides once you add water to them they do drink more like a bourbon it's like yeah maybe if i had it on the rocks and put enough water it'd be fine but like if yeah. you give me a low ride meat i'd be like something something's off here something yeah. bad is happening <laughs> it, it is i mean it does i mean it's just got that very distinct like flavor profile and yeah. it's for some people that's like like ed said before like with rye which is uh, something that i'm not a huge fan of is the dill when i get something that's really a lot of dill yeah. that's not that's not a rye that i like i would i would prefer one that's maybe a little bit more like on the minty side or the you know uh, spearmint or whatever that may be versus the dill because it's very like i don't want to drink a liquid pickle <laughs> I, I don't, don't want to do that you know, yeah. but for some people, they love they like like you. You may love that dill flavor. I do. You know, I do. I know. I I I go for the flavors, the very controversial flavors, and I know that about myself because uh, I I I will drink, uh, I will go for the stuff that tastes the most dilly and the most black licorice, yeah, possible. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I will. I will. And yeah. the funny thing is, the funny thing is, I don't like I don't like spicy things in pretty much any other context. But I will drink a, a spicy whiskey all day. So really, that's that's interesting. Well, yeah, you two couldn't be like any further off in terms yeah. of your profiles. The but the only the thing is, in American whiskey, American whiskey, we are polar opposites. But when it comes to Scotch, Scotch, Scotch we are we're on the same page. We drink a lot of heavily peated. Uh, really? Scotch. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's very strange that you like 
are okay with that much malted barley or, or peat especially, and then not necessarily like, um, like rye whiskey. I mean, peat is so like, that's the one thing like, so here, I'll tell you my first introduction, not that long ago to, to scotch or peated was like a Lagavulin tenure. And mm -hmm. I, I may, I felt like, you know what? I may as well have just gone outside and licked the ground. <laughs> it, 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 I, I, it was like someone just gave me like liquid dirt. I'm like, this is so disgusting. How can anyone drink this? So I don't know. It was, but that's the best part. You know what? To each their own, right? Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think both rise and like very peaty scotchies are both earthy, but they're earthy in different ways. Like yeah. the rye is that it's pickled dirt. And that's terrible and disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Like scotchy, earthy. It, it's, I don't know. It's it's got a nice like fiery smoky thing. Right. That really the, the smoke is yeah. is really the. I want the that thing. scorched earth taste. Right. Yeah. 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 And, and I and I've had in and, and that's kind of a, a cool way to put it is I've actually had some um, bourbons where they're um, like with toasted malt and stuff, so it gives a little bit more of a, a smokiness to it, and actually brought out some of the ones I've had a little bit of like a chocolate note to it, which was which was kind of cool. And um, I'm like, well, I can, I can kind of get on board with this. It was different, but you and different and unique, but it was, it was really, really enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think, I think my problem is with the bourbons I've run into so far that I've tried to do the smoky thing. So if you, for me anyway, and I know yeah. it's about myself because I feel the same way about scotch is either you got to go all in with the smoke or you got to not do it period. Um, yeah. Cause I just had a uh, Kings County peated bourbon. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, this is fine. Tastes a little too much like a bourbon. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel like that's insulting to bourbon. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and that's the thing. I mean, there are people who absolutely love that, that peatiness to things and mm -hmm. it just not, it just not something. I mean, again, coming from a guy who enjoys bourbon, you know, I mean, they couldn't be any further from, you know, I mean, it's crazy how different those two are, you right. know, yeah, so, sure. but anyhow, um, I want to say, uh, my whiskey, Dan was just talking about a rye. He found Douglas and Todd. I haven't heard of that one, man, but we, I might have to find it. If it's, if it's as licorice as, as you say it is, I might have to get a hold of that. And then I'll, and then I'll waft it in Erica's direction. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, should we, can we talk through a couple of, uh, the bourbons you chose as your best value. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'd be very uh, interested to hear what you got. So, um, like I was saying before, I've got. Um, uh, so this is this is kind of a so this is the old granddad um, one one four, and I think this is still something that's fairly readily available in most most places. High proof, um, really really good bourbon. I think right around that maybe depending on where you are between 20 and 25 bucks or something, but a, a high proof bourbon, which is, is fantastic. Um, Buffalo trace, easy drinking, 90 proofer. Um, and then actually one I really like, you know, a lot is the, is just the Elijah Craig small batch. I mean, I think it's a easy, it's easy to drink 94 proof. It's sweet. Um, and with that, I always get like a little bit of, um, uh, like an orange peel. There's always a little bit of a citrus note to, to that, which I enjoy. And then you've got kind of the old tried and true, which I don't know, looks like I must have spilled this. I don't know how I, <laughs> it. I don't know, but right. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, the ego rare. I think that's just another, you know, kind of gets, you know, I don't know. I mean, people talk badly about it, but I think it's a great 90 proof, again, easy drinking bourbon. So who, who talks bad about ego rare? I could picture because it does go down very I, smooth. Yeah. So I yeah, I mean, I, I think I think people, I think yeah. you know what I think it is. I think so many people nowadays in the in the whiskey world, I'll say specifically bourbon, have have really begun to attach themselves to high proof bourbon. Mm -hmm. and, and when you start talking about something that's 120 proof versus like 90. I mean, they're night and day. I mean, they're just like, oh, 90 proof. It's not going to have a lot of flavor. You drink it. It's like water. I don't want that. You know, so in comparison, yes, it is 
low proof. But when you're still talking about, you know, proof and, and ABV, I mean, 45% alcohol is a lot of booze. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's wow. a lot of alcohol, you know? So, um, I don't know. You've got to be in those kind of moods for high proof, low proof. I mean, not every night do you want to get home and, you know, choke down 130 proof bourbon. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, I think that's the thing. Whiskey is very situational. Well, anything, I mean, anything you're yeah. eating or drinking is situational. Um, there's yeah. not, there's not a one size fits all for even for any one person. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for me, I mean, like this, like the Buffalo trace, I mean, I think it's just a great, you know, I I'll say, or term, you know, um, you know, a daily drinking bourbon. It's just one of those where you're not looking to get bombed. You just want a good flavor of something. Any of these would do, would do that. Um, I mean, the, the old granddad's a little bit, you know, a little more uh, higher proof, but they're all still really good entry level, um, you know, kind of available, you know, bourbon. So yeah, for sure. Uh, and I just I did see in the chat I, I miss uh, I mistook what um, Whiskey Den was saying Douglas and Todd's not a rye so I I don't know I'll have to get with him and talk about that later figure out figure out what which, that is. which which what is he talking about which whiskey I'm not sure um, Douglas and Todd I really have not heard of it um, Douglas and Todd Douglas and Todd yeah I'm not sure I'm not sure where that's from yeah I've never. I mean, I've seen a lot of bourbons, but I can't say. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not well, sure. What... Someone else. So I was. I was completely off. My bad. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyhow. Oh, Steve A just popped in. Steve A has been following the channel since our pretty much our inception. I think he's been around since we started this way back in October. So. Yeah, and I've I've uh, I actually ran into uh, to Steve at the. Um, um our little uh whiskey thing we had uh distill america this year yeah so i ran into i ran into steve there so we talked for a little while and and all that so yeah he's he's been a uh supporter of my channel for a while as well so yeah he's he's a good guy so yeah yeah, yeah. um oh speaking of distill america i totally totally missed a chance to to see you there because we were running around all day um but your favorite what was your favorite thing from distill america Oh boy, that's a yes brown. So oh yeah, yeah. That's this a, is uh, a second. Yeah, <laughs> that's a tough. That's a real. That's a really tough one. Um, God, my favorite. You know, I guess I, I guess maybe not favorite, but I was interested to try the new old scout, the thirteen year that that smooth ambler was now mm. sourcing from, basically Dickel. So they had switched their move from from MGP, and and um, I mean they had a cult like following with their whole single barrel lines, and it was fantastic stuff. Um, now it's gotten a little bit of some some kind of mixed reviews. It's still a little bit pricey, you know, maybe in that sixty five to eighty five dollar range, and now it's it's a little bit like thirteen year aged like Dickel juice, and some people are. You know, either you love Tennessee whiskey or you don't. And that's kind of where this is falling into. So I was really interested to try that. And me personally, I don't mind Tennessee whiskey. It does have a little bit of, of a different profile. But the tough part was it doesn't compare at all to their former Old Scout line, which yeah. was yeah. very, you know, a little bit um, kind of disappointing. But yeah. um, what yeah. about you? What did you guys I, I saw your like your your capture your your video you did afterwards, and it sounds like you you got to experience several things, which was good. Oh yeah, we were we were running around, uh, just doing all sorts of crazy stuff, because um, we actually it was kind of fun because we actually got we did a couple of the um, what do you call it the like the seminars, um, which. Were actually really interesting. I Lou Bryson did one, and then they had one from uh, a bunch of craft people. Who was it? I know Jay Henry was there, and Driftless Gwen was there, and I'm sure. Oh yeah, and, um, Dancing Goat. Yeah, yeah. So they had a they had a seminar with all of them, just running through all their bourbons and rice, which was kind of fun. 
Um, I, I actually really enjoyed those a lot because they had some stuff. I don't remember what it was. But they had some stuff that you couldn't get on the show floor. Um, and then I'm trying to think of we I think Westland, the Westland Garyana Oak was really interesting. Yeah. St. George had another single malt that I thought was really good. And then we tried just a couple of really weird, weird, weird things. Um, I'm trying to, there was like a coffee, there was a coffee flavored whiskey that wasn't actually like, they didn't add coffee to it. They just uh, oh. uh, put beans in the, in the <laughs> barrel. There was just some yeah. weird stuff there. It was fun though. It was a lot of fun. Well, and that is, I mean, that, and that's the fun part, you know, tasting some of that stuff. Unfortunately, I had to drive there myself. So I had to kind of pace myself. It was yeah. a bit, a bit more of a, I probably would have gone a little bit harder, but knowing I had a, you know, a little over an hour drive back, I kind of had to pick and choose what I wanted. So I was, I kind of stayed away from like the funky stuff. I'm like, ah, oh, I'll pass yeah. on the, the goofy stuff. Yeah. Um, but, really but you know, it, had I had somebody to drive me home, I, I probably would have tried, you know, a, a bunch more of this stuff. So yeah. hopefully next year I'll be able to do that a little more. Yeah, for sure. Well, hey, um, I know Jeffrey Patron was just bringing it up. So why don't we talk through real quick um, the stuff we we thought of as really good bourbons for the value. Yeah. Um, with our honorable mention being JTS Brown. Um, this was actually recommended to us by a guy over here at Ray's, Ray's Liquor, which is just down the way from our house. Um, I think this ran us eight bucks. And so usually when you buy something for eight bucks, I'll have a, I'm gonna have a little bit right now. In fact, yeah, I'll just take yours. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. But usually when you buy something for eight bucks, I was expecting this to be gasoline, which is usually what we drink on Wednesdays. <laughs> Tune in tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, is that is that just an eighty proofer? Yeah, this is the eighty proof. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is not because they do because they have the. Is it bottled and bond? Is there fifty bottled is. and bond? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you can also get the uh, the a hundred proof. Um, but this is actually the nose on this is incredibly pleasant. Um, like it's not it's not the biggest strongest. I mean, it's only forty percent, so it's yeah not incredibly flavorful, but very sweet, very charming, caramel, candy corn kind of thing. Um, and yeah. for eight bucks. Like, because we, we yeah. go in there for worst whiskey Wednesdays and we'll ask the guy, hey, what's the worst thing you've got in? You know, <laughs> And he was like, OK, well, this is the worst. But if you want if you want something that's actually cheap and good, get some JTS Brown. Yeah, it really has gotten a lot of run lately. I, I think more, you know, most of the time people are talking about the the bottle and bond, which is maybe only even a few dollars more. And I don't know if we can get that in our area. I don't believe we can. Um, but um, the JTS Brown, it's really gotten a lot of run lately about, you know, being a really good, like fairly good quality bottom shelf bourbon. Yeah. yeah. You know, so and and again, like we were talking before, there's nothing wrong with like sitting down and drinking that at all. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, got good flavor. Yeah. I mean, again, it's not going to blow you away, but. But sometimes you don't want. Oh, go ahead, sweetie. I was not for eight bucks. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight bucks, you can't, you can't. Yeah, I was just gonna and say think, you don't want something ridiculously that you have like, to I analyze right. and really grapple with. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, that, and that's and that's gonna be that. You know exactly what you've got. You're gonna have a nice little, you know, pour of something, and maybe maybe kind of take a little bit of the edge off, and it did its job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know. So we will have to, we're going to have to get the bottle and bond version. Cause I will say, I think it's maybe just cause it's at 40 proof. The finish is, it's a little short and a little, it's got kind of that thin brittle yeah. kind of quality. And so I'd be interested to see what the, uh, the bottle and bond version is, is like. Yeah, that would be, that would be an interesting kind of like just side by side or like a, like a blind side by side. I, I don't think it would take you very long to figure out probably which one was which. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but it would be it would be interesting just to kind of compare the two, you know. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that sounds like a, that sounds like a future uh, rock gut review, is what it sounds I like. Think, I think it's going to have to be. Yeah. Um, and then of course the other ones we already mentioned makers. We mentioned Old Elk. Yeah. Um, what do we have here? Larceny. Yeah. Yeah. That was a little bit of a last minute edition. That was a last minute edition. It very much yeah. was. That was well, that was kind of on your suggestion. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think you forget about all the bourbons we have here. <laughs> so 
<laughs> yeah, and that's, and that's another, and that's another a really good weeded, easy sip. Again, probably something you like. It's soft. It's sweet. It's right. easy to drink. It's it's a good, a really good weeded bourbon. Yeah, yeah. I they, it is surprisingly peanutty to me, which I think is kind of a uh, a standard for what because this is what is this? Is this Heaven Hill? I don't remember. It is Heaven Hill. Yeah, it is Heaven Hill. Yeah. yeah. It does. I feel like a lot of weeded stuff coming out of Heaven Hill comes off as kind of peanutty. I, I, I think everything does. You, you think so? I think everything for me, that's one classic sign with like Heaven Hill. Not very often does Heaven Hill get kind of like snuck by me. It just, it's very, it, it's very peanutty or just very nutty in itself. I mean, you just get that character. And people will say the same thing about Beam. But Bean doesn't have as much. It Bean's got a little bit more of a funky. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think Jim Bean is that Bean yeah. Bean for me. Yeah. I don't know about you, Erica, but I don't get that at all. I no. have had. Have I ever had Jim Bean? You have to have had Jim Bean, right? You would right? think so, but I don't. Well, I didn't really. I've, start I've had this one. This was always. Have, do you have any of this? No, no. No. Okay. Well, that was the one. That was the old one. I mean, fortunately, I still have a few of them left. But again, just another, I mean, this stuff, when I got it, was like $11. <laughs> That's a good deal. I mean, it's, it's so, I mean, it's it's a 100 proof bottle and bond. I mean, for 11 or 12 bucks, I mean, you can't beat it. Now yeah. people, now people like secondary paying like 40 or 50 bucks for this stuff. It's crazy, you know? man. So, yeah. People, I don't know. People, but, are people, I mean, I, on the one hand, I appreciate the secondary market because it lets people get things they wouldn't be able to otherwise. But I, I well, we'll go ahead. I was going to say, I feel like if the secondary market didn't exist, I don't know. I feel like it's a lot of things have gotten more popular, they've get, gotten harder to access. So I kind of wonder, like, if that second market. Secondary market didn't exist. Maybe we'll be able to buy it at a cheaper price. You know what I mean? Or would? But that's the know. thing. Like, would distributors would distributors make the effort to get it to places like Wisconsin? Because I mean, if if the distributor yeah. doesn't make the effort, yeah, or doesn't have a reason, like a profit margin, to get it over here, right? They may. It doesn't matter how popular it is. It might never. Yeah. Here. That's true. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, distrib yeah. Distribution is crazy. You know the hows and whys behind it. Um. It's, it's, there's like, there's a guy I know who's a, who is a, you know, or works for a distributor. And the one thing he said was, don't let the power of money fool you because they're very swayed by the amount of money that gets paid to these district, you know, to these distributors and where this stuff goes. They kind of become a little bit of a puppet master. Yeah. yeah. And they decide once that pool of stuff comes to them, they can decide where they want some of this stuff to go. Right. And it, it can be frustrating to a lot of people because, you know, I think there's a lot of these, you know, mom and pop liquor stores that sell a lot of stuff and then they want to get like, you know, the pappy and this and that. And some of them just don't get anything. Mm -hmm. They just yeah. won't give it to them. So I don't know. It's, it can be awfully frustrating, you know, like Weller, like we don't get it. No, you know, it's all in Texas. It yeah. all goes to Texas. Well, and that's the thing. It, you can. I we've driven just across the Illinois border. We we made a little road trip yeah. not too long ago just to buy whiskey because you just pop thirty minutes across the border and you can pick stuff up. You'll never find in Milwaukee. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I don't know. I guess my thing with the and this is something we were actually talking about with, with uh, Jeffrey Patron last stream. Wow. These topics keep coming up. <laughs> But I do think the one thing I do find funny right now is, is you know, the secondary market has become such a force unto itself that in like distillers who know they can, especially bourbon, bourbon makers, want their secondary price to be something ridiculous because they know mm -hmm. it'll bring attention yeah. when they when they bring something out. You know, I feel like that sets up that sets up an incentive for price fixing. And all sorts of shady stuff going on in the background. Like distri yeah. the distribution system sucks in America. Yeah. But at least like it's relatively above board. Once you get into the secondary market, now it's like, you know, there, anything goes. There, yeah, it's anything goes. It's the wild yeah. west. It's yeah. the wild west. Yeah. It's it's yeah. it's very it's very much that, even though I think the secondary market and some of these like distribution companies 
are not that far apart. Like some of these distributors, they're very like mob-like in terms of how they control what it is they're doing and where their stuff goes and, and all of that. And it's it, like, I was talking with someone not long ago and they were getting product to the distributor and then all of a sudden what they were paying for it um, like a month or two ago, now there's a 40% increase on it and now he has to pay 40% more and he's like, well, what do I do? Just not get product, right. you know? Yeah. So now you're forced to pay their price. And well, I mean, that's shady in itself, yeah. you know, when you can do that, yeah. but. Well, and whatever. Jeffrey Patron, Jeffrey Patron's in the chat. He's pointing out the secondary market does have some standards, you know, and I, and I agree. Like you can't, you can't have a market without a buyer and a seller. Like there is some, like the the individual communities will police themselves, you know, to to the extent that they can. Yeah. Um, I think it's just the problem is much like you were saying, like with the distributors, as soon as you have one bad actor running around messing things up, it kind of ripples out and hurts everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it does. I mean, I and he he does bring up a good point. I mean, in those secondary markets. You know, it's crazy that like when they ask for a certain price and then all of a sudden another guy asks for like another $50 on top of what it normally goes for. And then the guy is just like kind of beat down for like, oh my God, you want that much for it? I mean, it's very, they are kind of policing it from the standpoint that it's got a set market. This is what it costs. This right, is what right. we're all going to pay for it. Um, it, it is, I mean, uh, the secondary can become like very fickle and... Um, <laughs> And, and and I mean, kind of annoying a little bit. I mean, trying to deal with that stuff. It's a but, bit of a bit of an alligator pit. <laughs> yeah, it, it it really is. But I I think the other thing, like you had mentioned before, or Erica mentioned before, was the fact that it does it allows for us to get things if you're willing to buy it. And there's a seller, like you said before, it allows us to get things that we we normally couldn't get. You right. know, like like well or twelve or something. I mean, it's like a you know, forty dollar bottle, but there you're going to pay one hundred twenty bucks. If you're willing to shell out one hundred twenty dollars for a forty dollar bottle, I guess more power to you. Right. You yeah. know, so people complain about it, but there couldn't be a secondary market if you didn't have, you know, buyers with the sellers. So yeah. true. You know, true. as long as somebody's willing to pay the price, they're going to keep selling it at that price. Right. Absolutely. I think yeah. that's my that's my thing. Is I'm generally like I don't need to pay that much like i feel like there's enough stuff that's available to me that i don't have to go and pay those prices no i don't know but yeah there, there's so many good things there's so many that that's exactly it i mean there's a million things you can go down to your local liquor store and buy that are going to be fantastic you know whatever the spirit is you like it's going to be fantastic and you don't have to buy into all the hype of all the big you know new releases and you know all of that you know special releases you don't need to do it. You know? yeah. I think that is one thing. Like, I appreciate that people, there are some, there, there's the unicorn bottles, right? Like there's, there's some that are, that are so rare and impossible to get that people salivate over them. Yeah. And I think there are some where I'm like, well, cause yeah, I will, I will pay a lot of money for George T. Stag cause I love Stag. I, that's just me. Yeah. But on the other hand, like, I feel like some things, the it's it's the issue of buying something drinking something for the hype rather than drinking something for the product yeah um and i feel like i feel like bourbon people focus on bourbon right now because it's the a really big boom i but i feel like scotch has been doing that even worse yeah. for years you know i think the scotch collector scene and the just the scotch uh the rare bottling you know ridiculousness um it, it kind of puts bourbon to shame honestly yeah, <laughs> yeah. well you and you kind of you kind of hit the 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 key word before was collecting right i mean there's a lot of these people who never have any intention on opening these bottles this is purely a collection and whether they like it or not i mean i mean honestly it seems like a lot of people who go after these big expensive bottles that most of them honestly have probably never even tried it yeah you know, they, they just want it because it's, you know, whatever, the fancy car or a fancy, whatever it may be, um, you, you want what you can't have. 
True. Yeah. True. You know? Yeah. So, I will say, I will say, I think people who flip whiskey, who, who sell whiskey for a profit, they don't make, they don't annoy me really. The people who do annoy me are like, I'm, I just want to, not even collectors, but the, the particular kind of collector who just wants only the high status bottle. Yeah. The, the collector who, if you want to collect all the bottles from one distillery and you just want to have them, or you want to make a big collection of one type of whiskey, something like that, cool, go for it. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, it does bother me a little bit, the guy who just wants to buy the million dollar Macallan and set oh, yeah. it on his shelf. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, there are some people that have got apparently like way more money than time. And yeah. if, if you just want to like, you know, shell out a bunch of money for a cool collection, I guess, Hey, more power to you. I, I think that the unfortunate part is you're probably missing out on a lot of good things, yeah. you know? by just, just wanting all these fancy, crazy, expensive bottles. And if you're not going to ever open any of it or most of it, what's, what's the point, I guess, right. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know, if, uh, if it was something you weren't going to, if it was something that you weren't going to consume fine, but like a bunch of stuff that we've all got sitting around at some point, you may as well drink it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's my feeling too, but yeah, you know, know. takes all kinds. Yeah, you know, uh, DJ One One just stepped in. Which, God, I love your handle, DJ One One. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a great, such a great name. Um, but he, I, he was just saying he got his butt kicked in the secondary market trying to finish his Game of Thrones collection. Yeah, um, especially getting the Klein Leash, which, if I remember correctly, Klein Leash was so good. That was the best. That was the best one of the bunch. For me, anyway. I don't know. What, what did you think? I haven't had all the Game of Thrones ones in a while, but like I'm based off only what I know about myself. I want to say the House Lannister one because it's a lag of Hulu. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Lag of Hulu was second for me, in all fairness. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah not, now you're no, no longer speaking any of my language. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any rebuttal on any of that. So. That's, that's fair. fair. That's fair. I know they. Um, oh, yeah. Steve A was saying the client is his. his, his his favorite. It was definitely, yeah. Oh, and Graham Thurston's in the chat. Hey, Graham. How you doing, man? Um, okay, so I know you, Scott, you have more things to do tonight, so we should try to finish this up. Um, yeah. But I know I wanted to finish off with our a recent acquisition for us. Uh, this is Iron Root Repo Republic Harbinger, which was in for I was informed by Erica and Scott that I've been saying that wrong for a long time. I've been saying Harbinger. Well, we don't know if that's not like there's certain words that have two acceptable pronunciations. So I don't know if yours is necessarily wrong, <laughs> but um, but I was I was gonna finish. I, this was my capstone for value bourbon. This did come in just under fifty, so I'm counting it. And and have you had that? I see it's open. Have you had that yes. yet? We okay. have. Well, we had this. We were down. Um, where were we? Wine. No, no. I was uh, when we first had it down in Texas. Oh. Uh, Austin. Austin, thank you. Yeah. Um, because we were down in Austin for the crowded barrel opening back when. And we got to try some of this. So when this came up to uh Wisconsin, I knew I knew we had to get a hold of it. Yeah. It's 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 really it's a really, really good um bourbon. And the one thing I've noticed is that I'll tell you what, Texas is starting to become very um I don't want to say predictable, but it's got this flavor profile because of the, the heat down there. Yeah. They're, they're, they're now actually having to slow the whiskey down because if they don't, it'll just be a huge oak bomb. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. We, were, we were watching uh, Cast Strength had a big tour of the Iron Root premises, and they were talking about uh, you know temperature controlling and all that, trying to keep it yeah. from aging too fast. Yeah. Um, I don't know. For me, I feel like... Texas, like you say, Texas whiskey has a style. Yeah. You know, it has a certain, like you can, especially with the corn whiskeys, you can smell it. You can smell like that really, it's like a prickly oak mixed with like. I, I, I that think, flavor up a lot. Yeah, like almost like, I, I think of it almost as like cactus jelly. Yeah. 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 I agree. It, it really is. It's, a, it's an interesting profile, but one that I. I really like, and you, you know, when you get the ones that are like are, are over oaked, which isn't, you know, for me, 
the most pleasing, but like, I think with what they're doing and their knowledge that like Robert and them there have, they, they really, they're really paying attention a lot to that. They really know what they're doing. I mean, it's, they've got some crazy things that they're doing there. So yeah, I do love their yeah. the family name of licorice. Licorice. Yep. Licorice makes, it makes yeah. it sound like they're a bunch of whiskey making elves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and who knows? Maybe they are, maybe they yeah. are. So who yeah. knows? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I'm sure if Josh Galladay watches the replay, I'm sure he'll love this. He's, he's the guy from cast strength who has become like the official, we, uh, uh, Texas whiskey, uh, uh ambassador. So you're saying uh, Josh, it, Josh Galladay. Yeah. yeah. You got to yeah. shout him out. Anytime, anytime I drink Texas whiskey, I mentioned him. <laughs> yeah. Well, he done. He seems to know, know an awful lot about it. That's for sure. So, oh. you know, but. Yeah, the cheerleader Graham Thurston says he's the cheerleader for Texas whiskey. <laughs> so, anyhow, um, we should, I know we should, we should come to a close. I didn't want this to go on too long. We're already up to an hour. Yeah. Um, yeah. Time flies. Yeah. It does. Fun. But, uh, uh, Erica, any, any last thoughts from you? <laughs> nope. Silence. Silence. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, you, you, you had, you had mentioned uh, Lou Bryson before. So next, um, next Tuesday, I think April 2nd, he's actually going to be on my, on my channel. I'm going to do a live, a live with him. Um, okay. yeah. So we're going to talk about his book and, um, just, you know, kind of his background and, and all of that. So that's one thing with like my channel that I've wanted to do a little bit more of was talk to some of these, you know, these, you know, personalities, people within the, the industry, because I mean, like, you know, I mean, sitting down and just talking about booze all the time is just, it becomes a little bit monotonous. So I'd like to hear, you know, people's stories and, and all of that. And then, um, I think a couple of weeks after that, the, um, master distiller, who's a female, um, for, uh, widow Jane bourbon, okay. um, she, uh, Lisa Wicker, She's going to be on the channel. We'll talk a little bit about some of those things. So I wanted to kind of start to incorporate a little bit more of the, the personality stuff, you know, that, that people can kind of share a little bit about how they got into it and why and, and all of that. So, yeah. um, you know, a little bit of something different. Very cool. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. yeah well, I'm yeah. definitely, I'll definitely tune in for those. I'm, that's something actually that would, would make another good video would be talking about women in whiskey and the research, like just, I wouldn't even say the the entry of women into whiskey. I would say the resurgence of women yeah. in whiskey. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. 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 But, yeah. That was that was I would I would say that was probably very much part of my like wanting to 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 talk to a a woman, you know, in these because now you're starting to see um you know like um like Marianne Barnes with Castle and Key, Jackie Zykin with um with Old Forester. Uh, I'm sure I mean, you know, Lisa Wicker with, with, um, um, widow Jane, all of this stuff. I mean, it is, like you said, it's not just like now women have never been involved in it. Now all of a sudden they are, it is, it's more of just a, you know, a resurgence of that. And I was interested just to, you know, hear a little bit more from her as to, you know, her thoughts on that. Yeah, so, you know, good sure. point. Well, you know, I, and that's the thing. I think it's, it's also, I mean, obviously America, but also Scotland, I know, Oh, I can't remember her name right now, but the next master blender for Balvenie is is a young woman. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's happening all yeah. over. I think yeah. there was an interest. There was an interesting article on whiskey wash. It was talking to a, a brand ambassador, or I don't remember what her title was, but she was saying that her experience has been that she really doesn't run into any sexism amongst professionals in the industry. Like everyone treats her as though she knows what she's talking about and mm -hmm. treats her very well. Um, but the, like the consumer base at trade shows is re That's really bad. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. it's something we have to work on is like telling people you don't have to just listen to the men. Like not, yeah. every, not every man knows what he's talking about. Case in point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 I agree. I mean, it is, I think, you know, so much of it, you know, you know, you, you, you kind of think like, well, that it, that somehow it should be like this male dominated industry, but that's not the case. I mean, you look at all these women, you know, in the past and now 
who are doing fantastic things. Same thing with, um, there's the, um, not the head distiller, but like basically the, the second head master distiller for, for Woodford. Um, uh, I'm forgetting her name, but I mean, it's a lot of like great women who are, are, are behind some great brands and, and products. I mean, it's, it's, it's good to see all of that kind of diversity with that stuff, yeah, you know? Sure. Uh, Graham was saying it's Jamie, Jamie at Belveni. Um, oh. So yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure of her last name, but uh, anyhow, I suppose we should be finishing up. Uh, thank you, Scott, for so much for coming on the show. We really yeah, appreciate thank it. You. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. And thank you to everyone who tuned in. Um, make sure you come back tomorrow because we are finishing up uh, March Badness. Um, and that's that's going to be uh, a big thing. Uh, and then anything else? Anything else you wanted to plug, Scott? <laughs> I want to make you um, no, I, I guess I would just say if it, if anybody in here hasn't uh, subscribed to the channel, go over and check it out. Um, I try to do um, at least a couple of uh, videos uh, or release a couple of videos a week. Generally, Wednesdays and Saturdays have kind of become the the new thing. But um, I I try to you know mix it up. I've gotten into a little bit more of the Irish whiskey, so I want to explore that. Um, a little bit more, maybe even some American single malt. I'll give that a try and see how that goes. But um, yeah, um, that's that's about it. All right. Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you guys for tuning in. Um, until next time, cheers, Slancha, and stay rotten. Cheers. I got to lean in and awkwardly close this down. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.